B Dot. You Q Dot. What's going on with you, gang? Yo, yo, yo. What's up, guys? How you feeling? Oh, man, I'm doing pretty good, man. How about yourself? I'm doing good, bro. Same old. Hanging in there. You feel me? Same old shit. That, My shit, uh, that, I'm hopping in the whip with the family to uh to run to the store and shit, but I forgot my charger. My shit, like, on 10%, so I'm just letting you know ahead of time, King. Yes, sir. So, you know what I'm saying? First and foremost, I want to say I appreciate you taking the time to come on here. You know, chop it up with me. Always, bro. Always, bro. Yes. And, man, I appreciate you, man, this being, you know, the two-year anniversary, man. You were actually the person who set it off my very first show. You know what I'm saying? So, Damn, appreciate two you years. being a part of this process. Damn, bro. Yeah, I know. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. Two years already? That's wild. Man. Yeah, no, nah, that's a fact, man. So I appreciate you coming on here. and man, I want to get oh, right man. into it, man. So... Most recently, man, you and Geechee finally had your two-on-two battle drop. You know what I'm saying? Versus Marvin Quest. Very successful. I mean, the battle is very dope. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of different layers to it. Um, How do you feel about that battle now that it's been out for a second? I love that battle, man. Um, Honestly, my favorite battle that I've ever been involved in. It it was just fun. It was cool to be, um, you know, when you're on a team, it's cool to, like, um, you know, play your role, play your position. You don't really got to take it, like, too serious. There's not that much pressure on you. You know, like, the pressure is is, is equaled out and, and, and um, you know, is, is, is divided in two and shit. And then when you when you in there with Geechee, man, it's just like, you already know he's going to do what he's going to do. You already know his authenticity is going to bleed through. You already know he's going to be him, man. So it was just fun, man. Really, I just had a blast doing that shit, man. And, um Looking back on it, watching it back on camera when it finally dropped, it was just dope from both sides. It was classic to me. I heard, I heard that. Can we can we expect any more two on twos with you and, you and Gotti, or you and somebody else in battle rap? No, nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it with nobody else with Gotti just because um, maybe Danny Myers. Because um, I'm just I'm just big on chemistry and and, and, and you know, and conversations and. Um, Styles, you know what I mean? Like my 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 best friends in the battle rap culture is Danny Myers, Geechee, and Loso. So um, I guess if I ever were to do another two on two, and if it was outside of Geechee, it'd probably be Danny or Loso. But honestly, um, since I've already done one with Geechee, I just I just much rather build on that that chemistry in particular uh, moving forward. You know, if we do one, if we get called to do one again, I, I'd rather just you know stick to that chemistry that me and Geechee. But I think I think it's a dope dynamic, different different cadences, different styles, um, different perspectives. You know what I'm saying? But still making it all like work together, and it, it allows me to get into a different bag, quote unquote red hoodie dot. You know what I mean? It allows me to, to play around a little more, have a little more fun um, doing a tour and tour with him. If I did one with Danny or Loso. It'd probably be, you know, heavy substance based, which is cool, but you know, it's what I normally do. So I'd much rather have more fun with it in a tour too. I heard that, I heard that. So I know you mentioned uh Danny and I just had him on the show uh, last night. Shout out to Danny and he was talking about top pins and battle rap. And the first name he mentioned was your name, yourself and Rum Nitty as guaranteed locks for the top ten pins and all of battle rap. That's wild, and that's something. <laughs> it's well deserved, though. I mean, you've definitely been somebody who pays attention. See, I don't to know what a pin is. Say. That that's why I'd be like, I don't know what a pin is. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I wouldn't put myself in the same category as as Rum Nitty or Twerk or Stella Jones. Those are dudes that I call dudes that have pins, like dudes that are just incredible with breaking a word apart, incredible with metaphors and idioms and shit like that. I, I just think I'm more I'm a straightforward dude, you know what I mean? I, I make shit make sense and I'm I'm witty and clever and slick, but I don't know if I would say that I have, you know, a pen like that. So when somebody like Danny Myers say that I have a pen, man, you know, that's big bro, I look up to him, you know, with with, with great a- admiration. So when he say that, man, it's just always shocking. He said that to me before on the phone, you know, but every time I hear it it's it's definitely shocking and I appreciate it. I'm humbled by it. 
Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Now, you're definitely somebody, like I said, who pays attention to detail. I think when people talk about penmanship, you know, you have your standard punchers who do a, you know, a one-two punch, you know what I'm saying, setup punch, maybe your regular four-bar setups. You know, it's pretty standard. Yourself, you're somebody who it may not be the most wordplay if you're talking about twerk and rum nitty. It may not be at that level or it may not be – uh, super intricate scheming, like say a Chilla Jones, but when it comes to your overall writing process, it's definitely elevated amongst your peers. Like you definitely have layers to what you're talking about, and you don't write simple. You know what I'm saying? It's straight to the point. Appreciate but that, But there's bro. layers to yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? So I Appreciate think that's that, bro. definitely right. well deserved for you, man, for sure. Appreciate that, King, for real. Uh, most definitely, most definitely. So one of the other people that had kind of got mentioned as far as, you know, some of the top pins and in battle rap was Iron Solomon. And I remember a lot yeah. of people were asking after JC had battled Iron Solomon and after you had battled JC, it kept coming up to the conversation of, well, JC had a particular angle versus Iron. He kind of was unpacking a particular narrative that he wanted to get off his chest. But people always wondered, okay, well, what a beat I had – that same time to prep for somebody like Iron Solomon, you know, what kind of angles and what type of content will we get? Is that a battle that you would be interested in going like in the future? Um, you know, I'm, I'm torn on that and I'm torn on battles like that only because, uh, taking battles where people pretty much know the angle and they pretty much know the premise of, of, or they pretty much know the points of contention. Um, I don't know if I want to take those type of battles no more, man, because, you know, what happens is my information and, um, you know, my, my, my angle kind of gets like watered down and is, is suspected. I'd rather, I'd rather hit somebody with, with, with something they don't see coming. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, quite honestly, Iron Solomon obviously is, is Jewish. Um, obviously JC is a Hebrew Israelite. So he touched on that topic. Um, Honestly, at me being a historian and me being, you know, Pan-African black nationalist, I would obviously touch on that topic as well. Um, I'll probably, I would definitely go into more, more detail than JC did and I would create a whole round about it, but it's like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know, man. You you know how I get, man. We, we have these conversations often or, or when I do get a chance to speak with you and um, I kind of get tired of the culture and I kind of get tired of battle rapping. So um, if, if I do battle rap moving forward, I want everything to be different and fun. I don't want to do anything redundant. I don't want to do anything that people expect me to do, man. I think I've, I think I've pretty much done everything that I'm supposed to do. And I think now if I do continue to battle rap, I think I should just have fun and not take it so serious. And if people want to judge me on that, you know, so be it. If people want, if people want messages and information, they need to just go watch my old battles because I disseminated a lot of information that 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 takes years to study. You know what I'm saying? So if people are really talking about they about the knowledge and the information, then they gotta go back and watch me and Loso, me and Danny. They gotta go back and watch me and Cortez and actually delve into the information and do the proper research. Um, but moving forward, I don't know if I really care to like drop knowledge anymore and do all that. I think I dropped all the knowledge I could potentially drop, man. Everything else is kind of just be like a, 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 a just just me redoing similar angles and shit, and I'm kind of I'm kind of tired of it to be quite honest with you. I hear you on that definitely. Now, I know we've had these conversations since our first interview, and I think the first interview you was telling me, man, like I'm kind of kind of done with battle rap, man. It's getting a little redundant. You know yeah, it's just the same thing from everybody every time I step in the ring. So I definitely yeah. understand you on, on, on that side of it. Um, but you did say, you know what I'm saying, if it's fun for you and you're actually into it and it's something different, something that you can actually enjoy, you know what I'm saying, you would get yeah. into the ring. Is there anybody in particular who you see in battle rap where you're like, that could be a dope battle, that could be a fun class where we could just rap? Um, nah, not really, man. I'm gonna be honest. I don't really, I don't really see anybody. Uh, I'll say it like this: like I don't see there's nobody that I would want to battle where it would just be battle rap. Like everybody that they want me to battle, I see an angle I could take. You know what I mean? But I don't want to take no angles. As crazy as that may seem, I know it's probably easy to say, well, then just don't take no angles. But I can't do that because I know my opponent's gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to be the guy up there rapping and just barring, and then my opponent is taking the opportunity to angle me because I'm the quote-unquote angler. 
So, you know, take take uh, T-Top, for instance. You know, me and T-Top was about to be locked in, um, but I kind of just – I got a lot going on in my life right now, and I kind of just kind of just backed out the battle and kind of turned it down just because um, I wouldn't be able to focus properly. And, and also, it's, it's just because, you know, it would just be redundant. You know, I'm, I'm pro-black, you know, and I, I want our communities to clean up. T-Top, uh, you know, walks around and, and, and glorifies drug dealing. So what's the angle? We already know. B dot is about to get on him about being a drug dealer and destroying the community. You know, what I mean, it's just redundant, man. And I don't know, bro. I don't, I don't, I don't see nobody that that's out there that'll make me just want to have fun and just rap. Um, other than doing a tour and two. If I do a tour and two, I might drop like a little bit of uh, knowledge. Or I might try a little bit of an angle. Um, but for the most part, I would just like have fun with Geechee. You know what I'm saying? We would just have fun with it and just bar out and just you know, try to just, you know, be authentic and be West Coast, you know what I mean? And that's the way I see moving forward. That's the way I see me having fun in this in this culture, probably only doing two and twos, to be honest with you right now. I heard that. I heard that. So I was looking and we was watching the uh, champion show. I was watching that when they were breaking down and ranking everybody, you know, one through 20 and all that. And your ranking ended up being 14. You know what I'm saying? You made yeah. the top 15 battle rappers in all the world. Which it's definitely much deserved. Now, I would have liked to have seen the ranking higher myself, but the yeah, fact that you're that. even in, in there when, like we just said, there's a lot of redundant angles people come at you with, and you're able to create something different each time. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, I feel like that's very dope, man. So that's very much deserved. Um did you yourself for the champion rankings, did you feel like you should have been higher or do you feel like they got it right? Nah, man, honestly, like you said, I'm I'm just honored to be on there because I honestly don't think I should be on there at all because I'm not Ooh. doing what everybody else is doing. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm not I'm not really battle rapping. Like I'm literally, you know, going into battle rap and, and taking approaches and angles and bringing up topics that I feel like are applicable to real life in real life situations that need to be addressed or talked about or the importance of history and the role that history plays in the present. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the type of quote unquote battle rapper that I am. So I'm not really doing what everybody else is doing. So I don't know how they're judging it. I mean, you know, uh, uh, lyrics, bars, wordplay, performance, like all the categories that they're using, I don't really fall into any of those categories. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just, I just rap and I just angle and I just talk up and, and bring up points. You know, I'm not, like I just said, I'm not, um, I don't, I don't think I'm to, to be compared to like, you know, like a rum nitty or twerk and those guys that really just have prolific, brilliant pins, you know, and that you can actually listen and score points off of, you know, the wordplay and, and, and the wittiness and all that. Like, um, that's just really not what I do. I kind of dabble in it, but it's really not what I do. So, you know, to be on that list uh, with those guys, man, it's, it's, it's always humbling and I'm honored. Um, when you, when you do, when you've been doing music or just rapping your whole life, man, and you know that you're great at what you do, um, any recognition is, is, is dope. You know what I'm saying? I just, I appreciate any recognition because I've been doing this shit for a minute, bro. Like making music, rapping. So anytime I'm, I'm, I'm giving, um, you know, do do recognition for I feel like what I possess, which is a high level of, of, of rapping skill, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? So whatever number they had me, all good with me, man. I appreciate it. It's love. I heard that, man. One thing I did want to uh, say to you, man, is I, I know a lot of times the fans can be wishy-washy. And with you, you bring information, if they want to call it knowledge or whatever, however they want to phrase it. You bring something yeah. tangible to the culture that without you is missing, like completely. You know, some mm -hmm. people may use it for a bar or two if they're battling somebody they feel like they can say it to. You know, if it's a, like JC and Iron, they might dabble in it for a couple bars or something. But you yourself, you actually bring it and break it down in a way where – the layman, somebody who does not know, can understand it. And I want to uh, mm -hmm. salute you, you know what I'm saying, for bringing that to Battle Rap because I know you saying it gets redundant, I'm bringing the same information, but I feel like there's those people out there who they're Battle Rap fans. They may be quote-unquote conscious or however they want to describe themselves. And because you're bringing this type of information and because you're able to disseminate it the way that you do, 
it's helping some of these people out here watching Battle Rap to be like, okay, I'm getting this information. I can go and look this up. People are learning from what you're saying. So I do appreciate you for doing it because even though it does get to that point where a lot of people bring the hate, there is a lot of love for it. You know what I'm saying? And I think that you brought a great attribute, uh, you know, something very tangible to the culture that it definitely needed at a time when it definitely needed it, when Battle Rap was really taking off, especially for the West. So definitely want to salute you for doing that, gang. No, I appreciate the love, man. Like I said, any recognition is just love for for me, man. So I appreciate it for real. Most of So one thing I wanted to ask you, because I know it's the JC battle. There's a lot being said on both sides, even after the battle, him being a Hebrew Israelite. (laughs) Those views kind of conflicting, which is, it it was very interesting. The angles you came with, I'm like, dog, (laughs) this is so crazy. Like (laughs) like me, I'm listening to it like, uh, like certain bars. I'm like making different type of faces. I'm I'm jumping up out my seat and people around me like, what you jumping for? There ain't no bar. I'm like, are you listening to what he's saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's how I go. That's how I go for Yeah, that's how I go. That's how I go for like for you, beat out a battle. For you, that conversation that you had, do you feel like, you know, looking back on it now, the conversation between you two and the points that you guys brought up, do you feel like that could be constructive for black people um, and people who? are looking to, I don't know if you call it being awakened or whatever you the word is for it. Do you feel like that's something constructive that people can get by watching that battle, or do you feel it's just a battle and just, you know, different approach? That's a really good that's a really good question, bro. Um I guess um okay, here's how it could be constructive. If you are delving into information and you're trying to figure out uh, what school of thought you want to go with or, you know, what religion or whatever belief system you want to go with from a woke perspective. Because even even being a Hebrew Israelite is still considered, quote, unquote, woke or in the conscious community, right? There's different schools of thoughts within the conscious community. You have your, your Afrocentrics, you know, your, your people that are in the comedic science, people that are in the Yoruba, Ifa, um, all these different things, and then you have the Moors, you know what I mean, and then you have the Hebrew Israelites, you know, then you have the, the Aboriginals. You got so much stuff going on within the conscious community. So I guess I would say that uh, me and him put information out there or had um, contention on on two sides of the field when it comes to being African versus being uh, an Israelite. And I guess for those who are coming into consciousness or leaving Christianity, leaving, you know, leaving an organized religion or, or, or the uh, the three Abrahamic faiths, whether it be Islam, uh, Judaism, or Christianity, if they're leaving those and they're looking for something something new, then I guess that part of it can be constructive. But quite honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even handle that type of information or that type of conversation the way that I did in the battle in real life, meaning if I was sitting down chopping it up with you about this information, I'm not going to be aggressive or combative about it. I'm just going to, you know, we're just going to disseminate information and, and, you know, bounce ideas off one another if, if you're if you're coming from an opposing view. I wouldn't necessarily tear it down. You know, battle rap, that's the rules of engagement. Like, I'm supposed to tear you down. I'm supposed to try to embarrass you. I'm supposed to find chinks in your armor. So um, that was my job versus JC. You know, the the points I was bringing up, you know, very, very – for anybody that does the knowledge on what I was saying, very, very valid, strong points um, um, because I know a bunch of Hebrew Israelites, and Hebrew Israelites don't fuck with Islam no way, no how. They don't even want to be associated with it in any form or fashion. And if you're also a vice lord, the vice lords have ties to Islam through the language that they use. They use the word Allah, you know. Um, so it's just different things that, that are happening there that, that can be uh, contradictory to a true Hebrew Israelite. So I was bringing that information forth. Like, if you're going to be a Hebrew, you know, you, you should at least know, you know, the do's and the don'ts that, you, you know, that, 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 you, that, you, that you really can't do. So... I don't know, man. Um, is it constructive? I guess, essentially, yes. But uh, it, it'll be more constructive in a different setting. Uh, most definitely, most definitely. Has there ever been anybody, if it was just like away from battle rap, not necessarily in the ring, but just away from battle rap, has there ever been a person who you've ever just, whether it's the content they're using or maybe an interview you've seen, 
where their mindset and the the things that they spoke on, did it ever like make you feel like, okay, I would like to have a conversation with that brother and kind of, you know, exchange information and, you know what I'm saying? Just create dialogue to, uh, you know what I'm saying? Build on something. Has there ever been anybody like that in battle rap who fits that kind of criteria? Yeah. You know, the funny thing you said his name earlier, Iron Solomon, Iron Solomon actually, because, um, you know, the thing is like, the older cats in the game, I could build with them. You know, Iron Solomon is like 36, 37 years old. You know, Danny Myers is, is 38, 39. You know, uh, I think Lux is up there too, like 36. You know, and, and me being 33, it's not old, but it, it's old in battle rap terms. You know what I mean? Because mo- most of these guys, you got like, I think Loso is like 26, 27. You know what I mean? You got Twerk is like 26, 27. Um, we know Chess and, and some other cats is even younger than that, you know. So, um, so yeah, man. Um, the dudes that's older, like like somebody like Iron Solomon. First time I talked to Iron Solomon was at the World Domination event when I battled uh, Verb and Iron battled Ilmac, and uh, we happened to be at the bar at the same time. We had a dope exchange, a dope build. Um, the thing about Iron is he, he's humble, man. He's a legend, but he's humble. So he, he watches all the new guys, and he, he was mentioning, you know, some of my battles. And we, we had a good conversation, and we exchanged numbers, and um, we talk on the phone. We text each other, you know what I'm saying? So um, I would say that Iron Solomon, I have good conversations with him, and um, and we, we bounce ideas off one another and, you know, just, just, just have somewhat of an exchange. And, um, and, and, and of course, Loso. Loso's a, a dear friend of mine, like, Honestly, Los was one of my best friends, you know what I'm saying? So as crazy as that may seem to people, um, we have great, great conversations. He comes from his Christian perspective. I obviously come from my, you know, African perspective. And uh, we build and we have great conversations and bounce ideas off one another and and, and tend to uh, agree to disagree quite often, you know what I'm saying? But but that's my brother and I love him. And, you know, we that's th- those two guys I would say I definitely had those type of conversations with for sure. I that I do remember, I don't know if it was maybe two years ago or anything like that. It might have been about about two years, maybe. I remember it was yourself, Lux, Hollow, I think Brother Polite. You know, I'd seen, I think you guys were all together. I don't know if it was just talking battle rap or expanding on something outside of it, but I think stuff like that, man, it's, it, it's something that I would love to see is just the mind and battle rap be away from the ring thing because everybody has a persona in the ring. But right. to get to know somebody away from it and build and be able to have those constructive conversations to help, you know what I'm saying, not even just with the battles, but just outside of that for people even listening, I think is dope. Yeah. No, nah, absolutely. That was a dope day, too. It, it actually, um, that that's funny that you brought that up because um, that day, the reason why Hollow and, and Lux was even in L.A., they were shooting bodies. So um, mm. they had... Yeah, they 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 were shooting bodies, so they like you know they they was out here and they was like I guess they probably staying together at a, at, a, at a hotel or or Airbnb or whatever, and they was going over their lines for the movie and doing whatever they was doing and um, polite hit them to come through. I was already on my way over there, and then uh, polite hit daylight. You know we all went through, man. We had a dope build. That was that was a dope night, definitely dope night. First time I met uh, Hollow and Lux, dope night right there. Mm, so that was your first time meeting uh, Lux and Hollow. Was that particular conversation? Yeah, that particular conversation. Yep, definitely first time. First time meeting them. Yep, and and um, mm. I'm good, I'm good friends with Hollow to this day. Um, I don't know about Lux. We wasn't able to really. <laughs> we wasn't able to really build a <laughs> uh, a relationship. I guess, man. I kind of mentioned it in that Swave battle. We wasn't we wasn't really able to build a, a relationship for for whatever reason, but um, but Hollow's my dude. Hollow's a good person for sure. I heard that man. So on, on the topic of you know conversations and everything, I want to salute you for your uh, podcast that you have, uh, the first one that you put out recently, man. That was very dope. Listen, yeah, I'm saying salute Thank to you, you for bro. starting that. Yeah, man, this is overdue, man. I, I've been meaning to do that for a minute, man. And that's the thing about what I'm trying to do moving forward. It's like I'm trying to transition, you know what I mean? Because it's one thing that to, you got to diversify your portfolio, you know what I'm saying? Especially somebody like me that, that has so much to say and just so much different things I want to do, you know? So it's like it was dope to finally get that going. I'm actually going to shoot. Um, I'm actually in Arizona now. I moved to Arizona and shit. So 
Um, mm. But I'll be back. I'll be back in fourth. Yeah, unfortunately, bro, Arizona's fucking trash. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> bro! I want to get the fuck out of here so quick. Trust me, dog. But uh, I'll be back in I'll be back in the land in like two weeks, and um, I'm gonna shoot my second episode for the podcast, man. So I'm really excited about that for sure. I heard that, man. So those conversations, those are just is it like a, a spur of the moment type thing? Is it something where you come into it with like already preset topics or anything like that? Yeah, I, yeah, we 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 come we come in with topics. Yeah, so like, um, that's my little bro right there. Um, and um, we basically always build like we always be on the phone for like hours and stuff. So, I I just wanted to keep the same type of format and just bring it to the podcast. So, we'll call each other and we'll just we would just talk you know for like an hour about whatever is currently going on and whatever's going on in the conscious community, like whatever it may be. So we approach on the podcast the same way. So like from from the in between time from one podcast to the next whatever goes on in the culture, hip hop, battle rap, the world, conscious community, I just kind of jot it down on my phone and shit and take notes and then um for the next episode I'll just have all those notes on my phone and kind of just go through the topics like that. I heard that yeah that was dope man it definitely was a good listen. You know what I'm saying? There's there's some stuff that was even talked about. You know, me myself, I was taking some mental notes. I said, okay, after this, I'm gonna go ahead and look look this up. Let me go ahead and research a little bit, real quick, even myself. Yeah, I was mad. I was. I I told you. Nah, that's that's what's up. But I was mad because I I told him before we went in there, I didn't want it to be overwhelmed with battle rap talk. You know, because I wanted to offer my fan base who who loves me for getting into the information. I wanted to offer them more of a conversation, but uh, we ended up talking about battle rap. I think like 80% of the fucking conversation, man. But, but yeah, if you, if you did get something out of that, that's dope, man. Cause I definitely felt like we didn't touch on any information uh, enough, but, uh, but hopefully next time we will. Uh, no, nah, definitely. No, nah, I definitely appreciate you and, you know, what you've been bringing as far as information and everything. As somebody like myself, I don't, I don't want to say necessarily conscious or anything like that, but I am somebody who definitely studies so I can be well informed, so I know how to maneuver and how to be a better person just in my day to day. You know what I'm saying? Just understanding, you know what I'm saying? Different uh, information, different thought processes and using it for my own life. So since you've been, you know what I'm saying? Just in, in the culture and just battling, e- even going back prior to the Fiji Osa battle, you talking about like your very first battles, you know what I'm saying? Just like, there's just something yeah. that always caught my attention. And then when you really started getting into the information and breaking people down and constructing angles, it was just something that I always just peaked game for and always wanted to make sure that I took the mental notes and, uh, you know what I'm saying, use that however it could benefit me. So definitely appreciate you for that. No, for sure, bro. And that's the thing about the word conscious, man. It just means to be aware, you know what I'm saying? So, like, there's people that are conscious and there's people that are, like, you know, Afrocentric and, you know, the the, the framework in which they view the world is, is from a certain perspective. But, uh, but we are conscious at the end of the day, you know what I mean? It's just... It's just who, you know, who's going to really uh, open up their minds and put the work in, bro. So I, I always considered you conscious from our first conversation, so I'm already knowing. Oh, most deaf, most deaf. So one thing I did want to uh, ask you about, and I asked Danny the same thing, when it comes mm-hmm. to the West yeah. and, you know, we the local scene in particular, because I know URL has kind of made a little presence Main stage yeah. brought a couple of events out here in the last couple of years, which is dope. It's dope is definitely yeah. something that was needed. So definitely want to give them their props for that. But when it comes to the local side and you yourself coming from LA Battlegrounds and coming from the local scene and building your own brand before you even got to the big leagues by yourself, you know what I'm saying? Doing that. Um, what would be your advice to the people out here? First, the league owners. And then the other side, the battle rappers, as it pertains to being able to build the West, build a solid foundation so that we can have something of our own to promote our own talent without having to branch out to other regions and other places. Really good question, bro. Um, I would say that those that are already in positions of power have to make the power moves. Like those, those that have already – uh, traveled and, and put 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 in work for the West and put their names in the game. Those are the people that have to do it. So like the disasters, 
the Geechee Gotties, uh, the Rum Nitties, um, oh. you know, whoever else, whoever else we call in, like, you know, a top dog on the West. Those are the dudes that have to kind of cultivate the culture out here and pull strings to, to really get the West popping. And, and what they have to do is they, they have to do, um, like, for instance, that event that just happened, I thought that that was fire, that disaster battle Cali Smooth. Like, Cali Smooth don't get the recognition he deserves, you know what I'm saying? And and disaster didn't have to battle him, but it's a, it's a dope look for the West. So I think dudes that have names should give – uh, I don't want to say give them a shot, but, you know, just give them a boost, give them a, um, you know, just, just help them up, give them a helping hand um, and pull them up and pull them up in the ranks. So you got, like, people like Kelly Smooth. Um, you got people like Young Grizz. You got people like like Ratchet. Um, you got people like Yak. Um, shit. And I'm sure you can name some other brothers, too, you know, that, that are just right on that level of, of – of, about to get to the top. So it's just about those guys throwing events and battling those guys that just need that extra look and need that push just for them to get their names up, really. And and more than anything, those guys, whether it be that, that level of dudes I just listed or even a lower level of dudes that are just trying to get on and just trying to start battle rapping, you got to be unique, man. You got to find something about yourself that stands out because Battle rap has to be like one of the most oversaturated genres of anything in the fucking world, man. Everybody and their mama want to battle rap. So if you're going to do it, <laughs> no, it's a fact, right? So like if you're going to do it, man, you really got to you gotta find something about you that makes you, makes you unique. Um, there's a dude I really like. Um, what the fuck is his name? Uh, 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 Jay the Nightwing, is that his name? Yeah, Jay the Nightwing from the Northwest. I really like him. I really like him because he's dope, and he has his own style, got his own cadence, um, got his own look. It's all that. All that is important, man. As much as we want to continue to 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 keep battle rap a street culture, and make and 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 make it seem like none of those different things matter. Every all that shit matters, man, because this is in front of a camera and this is a business now. So you got to just make yourself profitable. You got to make yourself. Um, stand out, stick out, uh, whether it be, you know, physically, your, 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 your aesthetics of, of yourself, and your branding, how you look, whatever it is, you got to find ways to stand out. So that's my advice to, to any up-and-coming battle rapper, and I would urge that those that are in positions of power, like some of the big dogs that I named, I would urge that they continue to do what they're doing and continue to, to, to reach a helping hand. And, and trust me, bro, like if I looked at myself like a battle rapper like that, and I just was was dedicated to the culture like that. I would I would easily do it. Like I would battle anybody and their mama if it was giving them an opportunity and shot because that's the type of person I am. But you know, unfortunately, I'm not really. Um, you know, I just don't love the game like that. I wish I did, man. I just don't. I don't love the game look the way Disaster loves battle rap. Like you know what I'm saying? Like Disaster lives, eats, breathes battle rap. So since he does, you know he got to be one of those guys to, to help the culture and help the West, you know what I'm saying? So, and I think that he's down to do that. And I think he's doing that. So shout out to him and shout out to everybody else. That's, that's pushing for the West. Um, yeah. I, I think that's, that's the way to go right there. I heard that, man. So the last thing I wanted to ask you, you know before we get up out of here, I know when Geechee got announced champion of the year, you know what I'm saying, the whole West, you know what I'm saying, was just yeah, going crazy yeah. over it. I know even on That's Twitter, for the West. I seen you make yeah. some uh, some tweets, and you was like, man, we taking this respect. Like, y'all, y'all ain't got to give us shit. We taking it. You know what I'm saying? Gotti the best dude in the, in the game right now. You know what I'm saying? From a culture that derives from the East Coast. And a lot of people was going at you and saying, oh, you shouldn't say it like that. You know, it's not like, you know what I'm saying? We're, it's like, no, we took it. Like, right, we went listen, in there. Man. Right, you know what I'm saying? Listen. No, listen, man, I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it a whole buck. Fuck New York fans. That's how I feel. I, I say like I don't give it, like that's the thing like I don't care about battle rap that much to to not say that I don't got a problem with New York I don't got a problem with I love New York I love New York culture I love New York battle rappers but fuck they fans bro you know what I'm saying so fuck them niggas I don't really care what the, what the how the fuck they feel like it's the West nigga like we've been putting in work like fuck them niggas I'm gonna say how the fuck I want to say it nigga we Gucci Gotti came in the game and took over y'all y'all shit. This is this is this is supposed to be a East Coast thing, supposed to be a New York dominated thing. Well, 
My nigga Baylo from, from Nutty Block Crip from Compton came through and took over the game, nigga, and brought that championship belt to the West. Fuck y'all niggas. Do something when you see me. I heard that. You ain't getting no argument from me. I, you know what I'm saying? You ain't getting no argument from me, man. I, I no, remember I even it. when uh, Geechee had got back on that, that Sunday night where he had got back and I met with him, man. It was just crazy. Like, he literally won battler of, like, the best battle rapper, period, in the game. Mm-hmm. It's from the mm-hmm. West. Like, that mm-hmm. is just a crazy feeling just to know that we – we went in there and we took that. We earned that. We went out there and, you know what I'm saying, earned that. Went on the road and earned it. Even yourself, Danny, Nitty, you guys all went on the road and did for the West what we've been looking for for years. You know what I'm saying? And even when Disaster even was fire. going out there by himself. And, you know what I'm saying? Danny at one time was by himself. And now it's to a point where it's like you got starting fives you can send out there and just take that respect. Like, nah, we out here. This our shit. That's exactly, dope as hell, man. Now, you know what's even more fire about Geechee winning it? He's the right person, bro, because he represents, he authentically represents what the West Coast is about. Because if I win it, or if I was the, the, the forefront of the West, they would say, oh, but he's a fake luck. So he rapped like, they would say, oh, he rapped like he's from New York. He a fake luck, yada, yada, yada. Danny Myers, they would say, oh, he kind of, he, 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 uh, he moved to the East Coast a long time ago, and that's where he honed his skills at. Yada yada yada. You know what I'm saying? So they would find um, they would find loopholes when it comes to anybody else. You feel me? So, but with Geechee, you can't find no loophole. The nigga rap like he fresh, <laughs> like he fresh off the block. Like he rap, he he's he's about as authentic to the West as um, as Cuba. Where's that? I don't know. Where's that? He's about he's about as authentic to the West as um, Cube was in the late '80s. You know, like that's what made Cube so powerful because nobody had heard that from the West. Nobody heard a dude being lyrical and at the same time, literally sounding like the West and having that West Coast sound and that authentication to him. So, um, so yeah, man, it ain't nobody better and more deserving and more humbler dude to win that, man. I'm so happy for the bro, man. And it's a beautiful thing because everybody really got his back. It ain't no animosity. It ain't no hate. Everybody know he real. Everybody know he authentic. And everybody know he deserves it, bro. So shout out to the bro, Baylo, man. He, he's fucking super dope. Oh, uh, yeah, most definitely, man. And sidebar, man, we're going to need you on more episodes of Ruin Your Day, man. You and Geechee breaking down battles is... I, you know what I'm saying? And when you add Ilmac as well, man, like that trio, man, is just dope. The way y'all break down battles, y'all bring the right amount of humor to it, you know what I'm saying? And different perspectives oh, yeah. to really break it down properly, man. That's that's dope, man. Hopefully we get to see you on more of those this year, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we probably going to end up um, – hold on real quick, bro. Yeah, I think uh my fault. I think um I think when I go back out there, um, in a couple of weeks actually, we gonna uh <laughs> definitely uh sit down and do a watch. Either that or, or one of them gonna be on my podcast or something, bro. So we can definitely uh look forward to that happening soon. Uh dope, dope, man. So, you know, once again I appreciate you, you know what I'm saying, taking the time out and you know, you were a part of the start of this whole entire radio show and media outlet, you know what I'm saying, even giving me a chance for the interview. When I did, you know what I'm saying, I was just learning how to do radio. So, you know what I'm saying, you definitely yeah. supported me and helped me out a lot with this, man. So I definitely appreciate you for all you brought to the West. And, you know, me personally, man, definitely want to appreciate you for what you've done for my platform as well. Um, all love, bro. Decent time, you already know. Oh, uh, yeah, man. These next few minutes, man, go ahead and do any shout-outs and plug everything that you have going on. Yeah, most definitely, man. So um, about to drop, <clears throat> about to finally drop this EP um, in March, so look out for that. Um, I'm doing a, a collaborative EP with my boy J.R. Swift. He had a, uh, he originally from New York, but he lives in North Carolina now, but he's going to do all the production on it. I'm going to drop that in March. I'm going to drop the album in June. So follow me on all social media platforms, whether it be um, Instagram, Twitter. It's all the same. It's, it's B dot the God with underscores in between. B underscore the underscore. I'm sorry. B underscore dot 
underscore the underscore guy. Yeah, so just follow me, man, and tap in. And any anybody that's uh, a fan of my work, anybody that's interested in anything I got going on, you could definitely uh, tap in with me on Instagram or Twitter and and, and catch up on, on the latest when it when it comes to me. So. I appreciate the platform always, bro. I appreciate the opportunity to to build, man, and um, much love and success to you, bro. Do your thing.